Cool. So now let's look at an example. So I'll take a classic current mirror, which is one simple circuit that relies on matching. So if this current is I not, nominally what what do you expect the current here to be? You not. Know? So again. Uh, remember that the currents will be exactly equal only if the drain to source voltage here are also equal but for simplicity we'll ignore the channel length modulation assume that current only depends on vgs so that we can quickly calculate what happens due to mismatch so now let us say that this guy has a current factor beta this guy has some beta plus delta beta this guy has a threshold voltage VTH. Okay. So which means now the current in the right side transistor will no longer be exactly I0. It will be some I0 plus some delta I. So we are interested to find the statistics of this random number delta I. So again, what do you think the if I take let us say 1000 such transistors here and measure the currents in all the 1000 transistors the mean will be around i not and you will have random variations so uh, i am interested to find the mean and variance of the de delta i what can you say about the mean of delta i zero so we just need to find standard deviation of delta i okay. and once again uh, instead of just saying standard deviation of delta i remember that if the current value changes even delta i will proportionately increase so instead of looking at sigma of delta i, what should I look at? Relative mismatch delta i by i0. Okay. So let me write it clearly. So delta i mean is 0. We are interested to find sigma of delta i by i0. Okay. So let us actually do a brute force approach first. So let us say uh, this is some VGS, the gate voltage. So for the right side transistor, the current is I0 plus delta I, which is the current factor beta plus delta beta times VGS minus the threshold. Threshold is that's all. Okay. So of course you can expand it. If you expand it, I'll have a term which is beta times VGS minus VTH square. What is beta times VGS minus VTH square? That is I0. So those two will cancel. So if I just want to find delta i, I'll essentially have a term which is delta beta times something. I'll have a term which contains a delta vth term. I'll have a term which has delta beta times delta vth. And I'm just writing all the delta terms outside and other constant terms inside. Okay. So I'll also have delta beta times delta vth square plus you will also have a delta vth square. These are the possible you know delta terms you will have. So remember that the mismatch is going to be not so much, it is going to be a small number. For small deltas, how can I approximate this guy as? If I have to do a first order approximation, what can I do? I can basically go and ignore all this, all this delta square terms. It's same as your small signal approximation, so I can ignore all of this, right? So my delta i is essentially strongly dependent on this guy, delta beta times something plus delta vth times something. So this I'll call as uh, delta i only due to delta beta. This will be delta i only due to delta vth. To find the first quantity. What should I do to delta VTH? If I make delta VTH 0, whatever delta I get is essentially this guy. So to find this, I will put delta VTH 0. Similarly for this guy. Okay. So let us do that and find out the two terms. So let me erase this. Uh, sorry? <laughs> it's not the worst case. I mean, this is I want to. I mean, I know that delta v delta i contains 
these two terms i am interested to find these two terms separately right if i put delta vt at 0 that gives me the first term if i put delta beta to be 0 that gives a second term okay okay let's say i find i am interested to find uh, the first term so i'll make delta vt at 0 so both of them have the same threshold so now if i write the total current in the right side transistor i have this guy to be beta plus delta beta times vgs minus vth square if i expand it i'll have beta times i'll call it overdrive square so what is this term i not so that cancels so i'll have delta i to be delta beta times so now if I basically multiply and divide by beta, what is this term? Beta times the overdrive square is I naught. So this simplifies to delta beta times I naught. So uh, from this you can get one uh, understanding. So to model the extra current delta i added due to the current factor mismatch what you can do is the following you can assume that this guy has the same current factor beta but the additional current can be thought of as being injected by another current source like so this current is delta beta by beta times i naught that's one way in which you can model it so that you can analyze your other circuits Every time you don't have to go and write the current equation like this. You can assume that you have a small signal current delta beta by beta times i naught getting injected to an otherwise uh, identical transistors. Okay. We have removed, we assume that the transistors are completely matched and the mismatch is modeled by this current source. Okay, this models a mismatch only due to the current factor delta beta. Now let's look at the second term. No, why? I mean, now you just found that if there is a current factor mismatch, this guy will, I mean, what is the current flowing in the left transistor? It's I0, it's forced by the current source. Now, due to the mismatch in current factor, the current here is I0 plus delta I, right? Now, what I'm saying it, what I'm saying is this, we can assume that the current here is I0, the extra current is pumped by an additional current source. That's the way to model it, that's all. So I'll quickly, let's do the second term. We are interested to find the current mismatch due to uh, delta VTH. So here delta beta is same, sorry, beta is same, VTH is different. So if I write the equation again, I naught plus delta I is beta times VGS minus VTH. Which one? This this portion? Yeah. yeah, this now has become linear, right? I mean, that's what we had done, right? We had ignored the higher order terms so that it's become linear. Yeah. So, this is the current if there is a mismatch in VTH. So, this I'll rewrite it slightly. I'll write it like this VGS minus delta VTH minus VTH square. So, now if I were to model this effect, what I can say is this, I can assume that the threshold voltage is the same VTH, but to model the delta VTH, I can consider that there is a small increment delta VTH in the gate to source voltage. Okay. So now I can say that VTH is the same, but there is a small change in my gate to source voltage, which we can, oops which we can nicely model by having a, a voltage source like this. Right? So this is my effective uh, VGS. So now you can see, right, uh, if let us say delta VTH is 0, what can you say about the current here? If delta VTH is 0, current is I naught. 
now on uh, this this can be treated as your quiescent point now your vgs has a small increment delta vth or exactly it's minus delta vth so if the gate has an increment of minus delta vth what can you say about the current so you can directly write delta is it's minus gm delta vth because the increment here is minus vth i mean minus delta vth i mean even if you work out this and then approximate it you will still get the same thing it's all the same small signal stuff so this is the uh, total thing so to summarize to model the mismatch due to current factor mismatch you add a current source like this assuming that the current factor is identical to model the threshold voltage mismatch you again assume that the threshold voltages are equal and the change in the threshold voltage is modeled by a small increment in the gate voltage now you see it becomes easier for you to analyze that's the whole point okay cool so now we have the two currents let's total uh, let's find the total delta i so if i write the total delta i so the first term was delta beta by beta times i not second term was minus gm delta vth so remember we are interested to find sigma of delta i by i not so i'll divide the both divide both sides by i not so okay fine so now if i find the variance of this guy what will this be equal to yeah why yeah so remember that again uh, hopefully these are clear if i if i find the mean squared value of x1 plus x2 square this is basically expectation of x1 square x2 square plus 2 times expectation of x1 and x2 sorry uh, yeah x1 x2 now if the two random variables x1 and x2 are in independent what can you say about the expectation no no it doesn't become zero it becomes a product of the individual expectations okay now on top of it if the uh, expectations are zero which means the random variables have zero mean this basically goes to zero then the expectation of i mean mean squared value of the sum will be the sum of the mean squared values okay and remember that if the mean is zero what can you say about the variance and uh, this guy if let us say for a random variable x the mean is zero what can you say about the uh, mean uh, variance and mean squared value they are equal okay so that is why here this random variations are independent they have no relation okay so which means that uh, if i find the variance it is sum of the two variances here that is because to begin with expectation of delta beta delta vth are zero okay so then this will become sigma square delta beta by beta plus oops hold on so plus i'll have gm by i not square sigma square delta vth okay so again i'll uh, use the pelgram's law which is basically this i know that the relative mismatch is inversely proportional to the square root of area so that's what i'm doing gm by i not square times a vth square so from here you can see if we were to reduce the effect of mismatch due to the current factor uh, mismatch what is the only solution you have to increase area that's the only solution but typically in most cases you will find that the variation due to mismatch due to vth will be more predominant than your current factor mismatch and the mismatch due to the delta vth uh, mismatch is proportional to this factor so what is an additional control you have to reduce the so to reduce mismatch i can reduce gm by i not 
so if gm by i not reduces what can you say about the overdrive voltage remember that gm is two times the current by the overdrive voltage so gm by i is two by overdrive voltage approximately overdrive voltage increases so you have a, a large overdrive voltage so that you do and i mean that should not be surprising because say i have a uh, initial overdrive voltage of 100 millivolts and for this case the delta vth is say some 50 millivolts if this is the case what is the effective overdrive voltage 50 millivolt it can be 50 or 150 i mean remember that this is vgs minus vth now my vth is changing by extra 50 millivolts so my over drive at the lower end it can go to 50 millivolts so now if i have a large enough over drive let us say it's 500 millivolts but delta vth doesn't change for the for a given two transistors it is same so what can you say about the effective over drive now yeah let's say minimum side it's 450 millivolt so now you see right from 100 millivolts earlier it went to 50 millivolt there is a lot of you know half factor of two variation but here it's quite small so logically it should make sense that if i have a large overdrive voltage for a given delta vth even the change in the current will be small i mean that is like you know stealing 1 rupee from 10 rupees versus stealing 1 rupee from 1000 rupees right if you yeah okay so just one last thing uh, so now we know that if you have two transistors there will be mismatch among the two transistors in terms of the current factor and the threshold voltage the current factor mismatch can be thought of as adding an extra current source and the threshold voltage mismatch can be modeled by having a voltage source in series with the gate okay and among these two typically this will be the dominant one right so now uh, in all your op amps remember that this guy is the basic building block right and of course on top of it you have other stuff let us say you have a current mirror current source something but differential pair is the fundamental building block of any analog circuit right so here if i were to plot uh, let us say the differential input the differential output versus differential input how do you think the characteristics will look like for an amplifier hmm yeah let's say for small signals it's going to be linear like this right and the slope will be the gain of the amplifier fine so now let us say uh, these guys are mismatched and the dominant mismatch is threshold voltage mismatch so to model the mismatch in threshold voltages we'll assume that there is no mismatch in the transistors but there is a hypothetical voltage source here resulting in the imbalance so here is where now you are applying the two inputs v1 v2 right so now what can you say about this characteristics it will shift to the left or right because now you see that you are not applying v2 to the transistor directly it is basically shifted up or down depending on the polarity right so you will have basically shifts like this and this is what is called as offset okay. so yeah in the next classes we'll see how we can calculate the offset in all our ots and before that we'll uh, take a look at noise because we'll see that the framework we use for calculating noise as well as offset will be identical so in the next class we'll look at uh, noise and then we'll continue looking at offset and noise parallelly for all ots okay. so i'll stop here sorry I